commonly known as Coco, as what you see behind me here in Konso. This week, we want to find out why this crop has become scarce in recent times. Welcome to the Ghanaian Farmer. My name is Enyonam. This program is proudly brought to you by Lizzie Tomato Mix, and we are supported. Our initiative, hashtag support the farmer, is also supported by Crocodile Market. We are going for a quick break. That when we come back, Frederick Terrier, a MOFA Agri officer here in Kunsu, will join us to tell us more about this half acre demonstration farm and what it stands to benefit for farmers in this area. <laughs> Today I'm having a conversation with Frederick Teria, he's a MOFA Agri Extension Officer in Consum and behind us is a demonstration farm which we are going to delve into proper. It is called Taro, popularly known as Coco. Mr. Teria, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Now, briefly tell us about this demonstration farm and what it means when we say a demonstration farm. Thank you very much. Demonstration farm is very necessary mm. in the sense that uh, this tarot that we are talking about here, mm -hmm. it is going extinct uh, for so many reasons. I think we'll get there. And there's a need for the government to come in. So crop research, I think their researchers went into it and then they came out with some varieties. And we have to try, see how it performs. Mm and then serve, let it serve as a planting material for our farmers. Mm. Uh, because if one or two people are using it, it will not be enough. Mm. But if more farmers should get it, it will spread. Mm. And then uh, the re recognition that it has lost over mm -hmm. the time, mm -hmm. it will to regain it. Mm. Because we get a lot of benefit from it. Mm. And it is going down to the drain. Back in the days, you can see taro or cocoa in many slum areas. It is commonly available. But as time goes by, it is becoming scarce and scarce. What led to this? In fact, uh, see, technology sometimes it helps and creates another problems. Mm. That is to say, initially our farmers were using a uh, whole catalyst for every farm activity. Mm. But it came to a time mm -hmm. our researchers brought out insecticides. Mm. And the consistent spraying of these insecticides is what is killing our tyro mm. in our communities. Okay, so it means the incidences are too high for the tyro. Of course. Okay, that is why it is, you know, becoming scarce. Okay, now how or where land, soil is most required or good for tyro planting? Okay, I think sandy, sandy loam. Okay. Yeah, sandy loam mm. is good for uh, tyro production mm. and not that alone. <laughs> If you have to cultivate it uh, in swampy areas mm. uh, because uh, it has got uh, petioles okay. which are able to connect with oxygen in the air. Right. The other plants that doesn't do well in water don't have that mechanism. Mm. Uh, but since the taro has got that mechanism, mm -hmm. it's able to do well inside swampy areas. Okay. Uh, so it is uh, probably if you want to cultivate mm. uh, taro mm -hmm. and then you have an upland place mm -hmm. and then a swampy area. Mm. In fact, let's take it like you've cultivated about one acre of mm -hmm. uh, taro in right. a swampy area right. and one acre outside. Uh, at the end of the season, during harvest, during harvest, you see the difference. You see the difference. Okay. In fact, the ones cultivated in the swampy area, the yield will be two times that of yield more than, than inland. Okay. Because so this, this is a one acre demonstration farm. This is an, an, a half acre. Half acre yes. demonstration farm. E exactly. Okay. So for how many months has this been since you planted it? Seven months. Seven months. Last year, August. Okay. So when is it going to be ready for harvesting? Roughly 12, 12 months. So let's say probably around August then. Around August. Yeah. So are the seedlings available yet for farmers or you want to harvest before you can make the seedlings available? They are available in the sense that you see you have Rhizomes that have also emerged, right. like this very one. Uh -huh. You can see for yourself. So if any farmer is ready uh -huh. and he has been working with us and he requests for some, mm. we will come and then cut some for them to okay. also try. Right. Yes, the expectation that you were looking forward to planting this, have you seen them? What has been some of the challenges that are so arising after planting it? 
Okay. Uh, thank you very much for that question. Mm. In fact, uh, there has been consistent improvement. Okay. Uh, in the uh, term that, <laughs> in fact, uh, there are a lot of farmers here. And working here is very tedious. In fact, because there are some galamse activities also going on here. <laughs> Sometimes the farmers prefer to go into the galamse than going into farming. Okay. Uh, so they need something that will convince them mm -hmm. that uh, agriculture is very important. Okay. And in fact, I made the announcement for us to start this project. In fact, they came in their numbers. And consistently, from the acquisition of the planting material, the planting, weeding, in fact, they have been participating seriously. Okay. And I think other farmers, we have different, different farming, farmers groups, mm. and other groups are also willing to even join. Mm. So I think, at least for uh, considering uh, advert advertisement, mm -hmm. I think uh, it is going well. Okay. Yes, this is a half acre yeah. taro farm. Yeah. How many seedlings of taro did you plant here? If I'm cultivating a yeah. one acre or a half acre as well, how many seedlings are we looking at? Mm, for the exact, I have to calculate. Okay. Because we have the measurement. We have one meter by one meter. Right. That is within rules. Yes. We have how we do our calculations. Uh -huh. We have between rules, like from here to here. Yes. Between rules. Yes. And we have within rules. This one. And this one within rows is one meter by one meter. Okay. And then the alleys, like the other one over there, mm. is 2.5 meters. Okay. So if you want to calculate for the acre, mm. you just do your change of subject and then you get it. Okay. So how many seedlings goes into one hole? Because I see, you know, it's, it's, it's scattered. Okay. I don't know how to say it. It's more than one. So okay. how many seedlings goes into one hole? Oh, okay. We put just one. Just one? Yes. But it, it springs up? As the rhizome springs out different. Okay. So we have ears. Right. Yeah. So mm. when it matures, it also springs out another mm. one. That's how come we are having a lot of rhizomes rising In up. your presentation, you made mention that some pesticide or insecticide were the cause of the scarcity of taro. Mm. Have we been able to find a solution so that in case a farmer ventures into taro planting, he or she will not encounter such challenges yet? Of course, for now, we advise our farmers that if you want to go into taro cultivation, dedicate an area, demarcate an area for that project. Don't try to do rice there, you try to do other sugar cane. By so doing, you will be tempted to use insecticide and then it will kill the taro. So you dem demarcate the area for only taro and then you do it continuously so that so taro doesn't like other crops being mixed with it. It, likes, it has to be taro alone. Is that it? It likes it though, but uh -huh. when we are using chemicals, it right. doesn't like it. Okay. And that's it. Okay, so in that case, I've seen the leaves we have here. Yeah. Some of them are spotted with, you know, dry or ye looking yellow. What is causing that effect? Uh, it is a taro bacteria blight. Uh, in fact, a moody night, cloudy night, low temperatures are basic causes of these diseases. And this has been an existence problem? Yeah, of course. So how are you resolving it? Because if you are encouraging farmers to go into taro, mm. because it's a profitable venture, how are we finding solution to this challenge? Okay. There are many ways we can find solution to this problem. In fact, the first one is bringing uh, disease resistant uh, mm. cultivars. Mm. And when you look at this uh, farm, you can see we have about four different varieties. Mm -hmm. In fact, it was produced by the crop research to be able to keep this disease mm. high. And when you look uh, far ahead, you can see the other varieties uh, have been able to meet, resist, resist the, disease. The, the disease. Except this, I think, as some This bar, variety. Uh, of course. Okay. So we will report it. You are it. still working on it. Exactly. Okay. To see how we we are able to control the, right. this in the entire variety okay. that is on. When you go to the markets, the women tell you, one, it's scarce to get taro, mm -hmm. and two, it is very expensive. Why is it like that? What informs that you know, pricing variation? Thank you Why is much. it expensive? Thank you very much. You see, when something is scarce, mm -hmm. uh, it makes the prices also hot, increase okay. uh, basic economies. Mm. And you can see, uh, some time ago, mm -hmm. if you have checked the background of taro production, mm. Ghana was doing well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the 70s, Ghana was doing well. Mm. But it came to a time, uh, people lost uh, their concern. Because this is a food security crop. Yes. Even when everything should go bad, you come to the uh, swampy areas, you get some to eat. Mm. And farmers lost interest. Their interest went into, I think, maize and other crops. crops. 
And then as far as the number of uh, productions that they do have reduced, of course, getting uh, the produce or the food will also be very scarce. Mm. And hence, the, the farmers want to also uh, make money out of mm. it. That's how come something small, they charge huge Big money for it. But it's not supposed to, to be, be sold. sold. And in fact, uh, this is uh, one thing our government and our stakeholders, opinion leaders have to uh, look into it. In fact, uh, if you check the amount of money this uh, cultivation can, can, can give you, it's an area that we have to get pay attention to. Attention to exactly. Now, that brings me to the planting for food and jobs. Exactly. Is taro part of those seedlings that government is giving? For now, for now, no. It's not part? Yes. yes. So what steps are being taken to include taro as part of the crops that are, you know, the seedlings that are being given out for planting? Oh, okay. Have you made that proposition to government? Of course, we have chain of commands. Mm. And so I have made it to my immediate uh, 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 boss, mm -hmm. supervisor. Mm. I think he will too forward it till mm -hmm. he get to the, mm. uh, the big men there. Okay. And then they come, they come to our aid. Okay. Mm. So viewers, you're still watching The Ghanaian Farmer. My name is Anya and This week, we are all the way in Kunsum. We are having a conversation on taro production or koko production and the experts I have with me today to enlighten us about this particular kind of crop is called Frederick Teria. He's a Mofa Agric officer here in Kunsu. Let's go for 60 seconds on Agric and when we come back we'll delve more into taro production. Perhaps you might want to take your attention there. I'll be right back. <music> By our 60 seconds on our Greek, you are still watching the Ghanaian farmer. My name is Enyonam. Teria, yes, yes. let's talk about the environment where you can plant taro. I realize there's a lot of water in the ground, and also there's a lot of weed or grasses here. What effect does it have on the crop? You mean the positive impact? Or... Yes, positive impact. Let's talk about the positives. Okay, for the water. Mm -hmm. uh, initially, I, I explained mm -hmm. that this uh, it has got petioles, okay. as you can see, mm. uh, that have connection with the atmosphere mm. for gaseous exchange. Mm. Uh, so that allows the taro to perform, do well inside mm. swampy areas. Mm. Uh, for other, let's say cassava and could if not got, okay. so it will rot. That is why it needs water. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. How much are we looking at if a farmer wants to go into, let's say, a one acre uh, taro farming. Okay, uh, beginning at least you have to look for your land mm -hmm. and for the land uh, you can probably you have a family land mm. uh, so you can use it maybe without hiring mm -hmm. but if you don't have some you have to hire your land mm. and that one is also it uh, pertains to specific areas okay. probably some communities will have less uh, than others. Okay. Uh, so let's take the land aspect from the problem right. you have got your land. Yes. Um, so right now we are looking at the input and the seedlings. Oh, okay. And then labor. Oh, is that okay. not it? Of course. Okay. So you put that cost together oh, and you're okay. good to go. Is that it? Or there's something else you need? Oh yeah. That, that is Do it. Do we have to also consult an agri officer when I want to go into planting taro? Oh, okay. You have. Uh -huh. You see, in fact, uh, we are on the field mm. and we also go to our office conferences. Okay. We also go to school. Right. To update ourselves. So always we have new knowledge mm. over this production. So we have to consult you. Of course. So you help us on how to go about exactly. it and get the expected results. Exactly. Now let's look at, you know, 
clearing the land or clearing the farm, how often does a taro farm need to be cleared to create enough space for it and all that? How often should a farmer okay, do that? At least for one month going. After one month? After every one month. When you, you plant it, you, you have to come and weed. Yeah. And how about the input that it needs? For the input, uh -huh. uh, even after planting, even two weeks, you can apply fertilizer. If only you have. After two weeks? Uh, yeah, you can even apply. When you finish planting the seedling, of course. you can apply your fertilizer. Of course. Okay, and then after that, what happens next? Then you have to weed. Okay. Yeah. How long will a taro take to mature for harvesting? In fact, one year. One year? Yeah. Then and it's in, ready for initially, harvesting. Initially, uh -huh. the swampy ones takes longer time to mature than the, uh, the up, inland upland. One. Right. Yeah. Upland, well, let's sorry. say if the swampy, uh, the upland is like uh, actually uh, about eight, mm -hmm. uh, six to 12 months, mm -hmm. it can mature. Okay. But for the swampy one, let's mm. say about 12 to 15 mm. months okay. uh, before it can mature. Okay. So this one will take a uh, year at least for harvesting. Of course. How many times can a farmer harvest taro? after one year when it's matured? Uh, as numerous as the person wants. As numerous? As the person wants, because probably uh, the market cannot take everything at a, on a whole. Okay. So maybe like when so we have uh, one market day in a week, uh -huh. on Fridays. Okay. Probably this market you want to send uh, about two bags. You come and harvest and you send, you're able to sell. This market maybe two bags, still it is exhausted. <laughs> You have it by uprooting, right? Uh, yeah, we have simple, we have simple tools. Of course, we can use a garden for a um, uh -huh. garden uh, trowel uh -huh. uh, to dig around, and then you you pull, you hold the pistol. Uh, so when I uproot one plant, how will I come back and harvest again? No, you uproot, gather, and put inside the sack. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, I know. Yeah. What I'm saying is that yeah. when I uproot this, yeah. How will I come back and harvest again? It means it's just one time. Of course, you harvest different one, not the same. Not the same. Yeah, you harvest different one. Probably the first time you came, mm -hmm. you harvest this section. Mm -hmm. The next time you go to the next section, okay. that is what. In I'm one row, how many taro are we seeing? Are you able to count? You are able to count, but let me see. Hey, who back kind? Papa. Let's see. For for here, uh -huh. around, around twenty-five. Twenty-five yeah. pieces exactly. in one row. Exactly. Okay. Um, my next question will be that how many sacks of taro can I get from this half acre of land? You can get, for, we check it in tons. Okay, tons. So let me say probably about six tons per half acre because you can have about 12 tons per acre. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm rest assured I'll get. Roughly, if you don't get around six tons, 6.8, you can get. Okay. From my sacks of taro from my farm the, the tongue is not an acre it's also a measurement okay yeah, to be. go about measuring it yeah okay yeah. all right so which weather temperature you know is best or good for taro okay taro needs a lot of water though but the sunshine too is yes, very important the weather yeah mm -hmm. so the weather should be balanced okay if only you have your wet land mm -hmm. the weather should be balanced okay because too much cloudiness causes diseases uh-huh and over dryness to, to not be able to function well. Right. Yeah, so it should be balanced. Yeah. Um, I've seen a lot of signposts yeah. at each, you know, uh, in front of each of the taro plants. Yes. Mention the varieties and what makes it different. Okay, from our right to the left, uh -huh. uh, we have uh, Asempa. Okay. Uh, we have about eight rows of Asempa. Okay. And then we have uh, Yanyawa, the next one. Uh -huh. Then we have Hubelo, uh -huh. about 10 rows. And the last one is uh, Ajemkwa. What is the it. difference between all this? In fact, it's about the color. The first two, they are red in color. Okay. And then the last two, I think they are white in color. In color? Yeah. Okay, so it's just a color that separates them? Of course, and not, the, you see? Does it come with a taste as well? Uh, not too much of the taste. Okay. But it's like, you see the sprouting. Uh -huh. See, the other one uh -huh. is bushy. Okay. Yeah. You can see more petals, more uh, rhizomes have right. risen from it okay. than this one. Right. Uh, yeah, so those are some of the basic things that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we are wrapping up our interview. But what other information would you share with farmers, especially those who would want to go to the MOFA office and buy taro seeds, you know, try their hands on it? What other information would you share with us? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. In fact, I want uh, all farmers hearing us mm -hmm. to consider cultivating uh, taro. Mm. See, taro, they sometimes call it as uh, 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 old cocoa yam yes. because it's, it's an African native. Mm -hmm. And we have the uh, colocasia. That one is new because it was introduced by the uh, West Indies mm -hmm. and then the uh, other Asians. Mm -hmm. 
So it is a food crop <laughs> that can help us, uh, let me say, food security. Okay. It can help our food security. Right. And apart from that, you see, companies mm -hmm. can even buy them and they use them for children's food mm. and others. We can also export some because mm -hmm. foreigners are eating the Asians. But you have not made the demand in Ghana. How do you think about exporting? That, that is an area I want us to check. Okay. Probably you don't like uh, looking, focusing on the uh, interlands okay. or on the natives. Right. You can send it abroad if you okay. want. And then this one too, you can sometimes boil it like uh, contumbri. Mm -hmm. This one. The leaves. That have got, yeah. I wanted to ask you. Yeah, yeah you finish, then you tell me about the leaves. It has got a lot of uh, acid mm. than the contumbri. Okay. So probably you have to cook it, cook it like twice. Before, before? Before you use it for sauce, mm. uh, palava sauce. Okay. Uh, so we can even introduce it to the uh, outside world mm. that we have something of this in nature. Mm -hmm. Probably you can compare it to maybe spinach mm -hmm. or something mm. so that you come for our own. Mm. And they have to be able to protect it for long. Okay. Our people who uh, research into those things, probably we can cut them, put them inside cans mm -hmm. when we, are, uh, we want to use them because it cannot keep long. Probably when you should. How, how long can you store taro for before it goes bad? Oh, very long. Uh, if you put it in an, an open area, open area, okay, uh, at least it will stay for one like month, two months, a month. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, of course. Okay, and when you want to preserve it longer, for extreme, I can stay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Stay. Probably we have to reset into that one too. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it means you are available if any farmer wants to reach out to you. Very well. Uh, do we have land also available if a farmer wants a land? Oh, of so course, equally. the land is for, mm. the, for the chiefs to decide. Okay. In fact, this one was given to us by the Kunsuhine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if you want a land, right. I think they have a land tenant system. Process, Process you have, to go, have to go through. Go to, to All right. So viewers, there you have it. Enough information about taro, a.k.a. Koko. <laughs> My name is Anjana. I'm going for a quick breather. When I come back, I will engage another expert, a MOFA officer, or what is it? Is it MSI? She will come and tell you everything. So I understand what kind of support system they also give to farmers who are into taro planting. Uh, stay tuned, I'll be right back. Welcome back and you're still watching The Ghanaian Farmer. My name is Enyanam. This is the time I call it my fat check to get the expert advice on what they are doing to help farmers scale up or improve on what they're already doing. I have with me uh, Lydia and Kansa. She's looking at Lydia and Kansa. Thanks for joining us once again. <laughs> Lydia, tell us about know. your department and what kind of help you give to farmers in this area. Okay, my name is Lydia and Kansa. Mm -hmm. I am S manager at Man Council. Mm -hmm. um, I, because I work with farmers, right. I'll, look, I'll go with our local dialect so That's that they will understand me more. Oh, okay. 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 Right. So the yeah, yeah, pan say yeah, the farmers ne ye juma. All farmers, but we do in koko. Mm -hmm. But because we do in koko, we do in you know any farmer. Yenja ubiya o. Ne ti ane say ye collaborative with Bofa. Enti ye chwe in farmers na additional livelihood. Meka additional livelihood that they may pa chwe ane say. Uye kweni biya as I said uye bi bi ka ejuma o ye. Apart from a queer now, we are in the moment church, a bray, a fire, a cry, a be a sassy be the well for an animal who said, and fast or so. Typical example is when it is swampy areas. Baby, I hear a run at a chat and check. A be our names or better be the air baby. In tea, your man in church and entity. What's our seer that hey? Who better me the dream? A one thing I hear. Two, a be a who better me the dream making. Bet me the dear cook with your metty ham. Anna, so bet me dear ready. Into your mom was her and your chair when you are aside that and also. Your chum will cry on mobile fast work home when him, a more more tomb pong, not community in a sweat tomb pong. Into your chum, a beer, who bet me I am webby. Say, be our year cook well for Coco and a bedroom baby near coffin. Okay. Now, so you advise them to add extra yes. things to make an extra income as well. Yes. Okay. Now, farmers have a lot of uh, things they do, yes. especially they have to rely on laborers to help their work get done. In a farm like Taro Farm, Nejumayen at is it less stressful or it involves a lot? Oh, How does he go about it? It involves a lot. Okay. Because, on say, who can labor? Mm. As I say, we pay a penny money bedroom. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
at a chemo pass or bad in some barber to two, cause any baby and I bet me this a kind of okay. I said, Would you two because in so what I tell him, right? It is said, Well, and you know, not true now. When you're creating some of my fat or penny, said, Oh, my baby, okay, I just said, Wow, fat or so, okay. In a year, no, when is the best to plant taro? Oh, during the rainy season or any time, which is a any land that is available, okay. So, what's that? I said that one, no, a swampy area mm. mostly. Any day, I recommend any day, yeah. yes, any time, but in the area, okay. I see now, apart from the regular rainy season, and probably if the the area or the soil is a swampy place, you yeah. can plant it. What else can a farmer do if I have a half acre mm -hmm. of taro? A yeah. farmer, then I also met media system of your account. Oh, we bet me a a hoodie. Kakra wo. Yes. Okay. Because I need to paint so pa. Okay. And I make Okay. Make any no. I do baby on say into any coffin. Into no ten be any any from from. Okay. Into be we say no so a wo nice leaves. But a real boy baby I don't say na have any ni na ashi. Okay. Into wo baby to say say I advise so bet me the dream make any. Mo ajuma na mo ye no. What is the most challenging part of it all? Cause many why I an anti kakra. What's the most challenging part of it all? Oh. Near Tiana said, A queer for me, a queer for so who had you my Nipayakas and Nipa who had you my eddy. As I said, would church and in Kakranka crack and send no bad bed yet to me because our previous mindset ain't changing a bank a crank a crack there, but it doesn't count at once. Okay. Now, more call inspection need training this animal. Who takes care of paying? Do farmers pay you? No, not at all. It's for free. Okay. It's for free. Munji bush allowance. Yeah, but yeah, per se farmers no. If farmer no hu, when you see cash in the bottom, na na ju me di any kwaso. And the bush allowance, kwa wo nje jai sa na matisa bush allowance. Anyo anyo ma me chow. Aye. Bush allowance no se mi mi charge o. Aha. Mi can rent o, but wo wa ban e bi aso o. Me ko ju body e. That is what we call it bush allowance. But a farmer zai ni bi bi a o. Bush allowance. Okay. You get it. Yeah, yeah, we are in kasa. Okay. A farmer who is watching you, been in in a kwa. In other parts of the region, now Oshawa, what advice would you give to them? Especially because this crop has become scarce, yes. and we are encouraging farmers who have lands that are swampy to go into it. Advice being, and now they more and more. Christ, send them in now. They more farmers. Yeah, my country farm, be a wife, me we are still fine. Na ne se, se wo wa sa si bi da wa en kase e bi a mi ko mi ko school ana man ko school come to Mofa. Okay, engage us. We will help you to develop your mindset, okay. your business. Okay. Is in fact farming is a business. Farming so is a business, Madam and Cancer. I see bush alarm was near once in a while. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll come your way again next week. This is a wrap on the Ghanaian farmer. My name is Enyonam. Bye for now.